Good afternoon, everybody. Today we are going to be starting with the flip flops. Okay, so what are flip flops? Flip flops are binary storage elements which are capable of storing one bit of information, right? So they are also known as the memory elements. As I have already explained to you, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, classes. Yes. Ma'am, your screen is not visible. Yeah, I haven't presented anything now, up till now. I will present okay. in a minute. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we have already talked about the combinational circuits. We've already talked about the sequential circuits. And we have also discussed broadly about the flip-flops, if, if you remember. Do you remember? Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, ma'am. We had discussed flip-flops when we had talked about the registers. We had also revisited flip-flops on a broad level when we talked about the sequential circuits. Right. So uh, today we are going to look at the flip-flops in details. So we're going to see what are the different kinds of flip-flops and how do they function, right? So as we have done earlier, a flip-flop is an example of a sequential circuit. So what is a sequential circuit? We had said that a sequential circuit, like a combinational circuit, is also an interconnection of the logic gates. So basically, it is an interconnection of some, some kind of an interconnection of the uh, basic logic gates that we had studied or their extended forms. But it differs from the combinational circuits in that it also has a set of memory elements which store the previous state of the circuit. You remember this? Yes, ma'am. Right. So just to revise this for you, the sequential circuit, therefore, can be viewed as a combinational circuit, okay, uh, which gets the inputs from the user and gives out the output to the user. But in addition, its output is also stored in the memory elements that we call as flip-flops. And this output of the previous state that we are storing in this flip-flop is also used as an input for getting the output of the next state. OK, so a sequential circuit is a combinational circuit which not only gets inputs from the user, but also gets the input from the previous state of the uh, uh, circuit. OK. And therefore, its output is not just dependent upon the current input that the user is just now giving, but it is also dependent upon the previous state. That means the output which was produced by this circuit the last time. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Right. So we had seen that uh, uh, counter is one of the examples of a sequential circuit. And another example is a flip-flop. And therefore, a register as well, because it is a uh, uh, it is it is made up from a combination of flip-flops, right? So we had discussed the differences between the combinational circuit and the sequential circuits. I have, again, revisited that verbally for you. OK, let us start with the types of flip-flops today. OK. So what are the different types of flip-flops that we have? So the first flip-flop that you see here uh, is called the SR flip-flop. These flip-flops are classified based on how they uh, perform the operation. That means they all of them obviously will perform the basic function of storing one bit of information. OK, that all of them are going to do. But then what will vary? 
the number of inputs to each flip flop may vary as you will see okay and depending upon the input what output they do they give us it is uh, uh, not always desirable that the flip flop just gives us whatever we have stored in uh, in it in the same format okay we may like to have a different kind of output so these flip flops vary in what kind of outputs they give us when we feed them a particular kind of input combination okay so we are going to be seeing all these flip flops one by one they are sr flip flop d flip flop jk flip flop and t flip flop respectively clear yes ma'am yes ma'am right we are going to be starting with the first flip flop that is the set reset flip flop also known as sr flip flop okay now <clears throat> this is the most simplest flip flop uh what you see here is the uh, graphic symbol of this flip flop okay the pictures have all been taken from your book from your textbook for your convenience so that you can fall back on them now there are two inputs here which are s and r respectively s for set r for reset and there is a third input which is also sometimes known as a dynamic input it is actually the clock signal okay now what is the significance of the clock signal or this input the significance is that these flip flops are generally also known as clocked sequential circuits okay they are also called as clock sequential circuits clocked sequential circuits why are they called like that because these sequential circuits operate whenever they are supplied a clock pulse okay whenever we applied a whenever we give them a clock pulse only then the state of this flip flop is going to change okay so the dynamism here is indicated by this triangle sign so what this means is that even though there may be some value let's say some zero or a one which is residing on the sr inputs still this flip flop will not work it will not change its state unless and until i apply a clock pulse to it is this clear yes ma'am right now the flip flop has an output okay it is designated by q formally written as q t plus 1 now q t plus 1 means the output at the next instant okay so if we assume that the previous instant at which this flip flop worked and had produced an output was t and the output at that time was denoted as qt okay if we assume that the previous time instant is denoted by t and the output at that time is denoted by qt tell me students qt qt this is the this is the output at the previous time instant then the output which will be produced at the next time instant is called qt plus 1 it will be termed as qt plus 1 is this clear yes ma'am yes ma'am right and this is simply a bubbled output that means whatever q we get from here whatever output we get from here the complemented output can be had from here is this clear 
right so we will be talking just about what are we going to feed in these s and r inputs and what is this flip flop going to do accordingly with these inputs and what output it will give me at the next instant is this clear yes or no students yes ma'am right so yes. accordingly you see that we have listed all the input combinations for s and r inputs respectively here and i'm going to table the whatever output i i am getting for qt plus 1 here right now what happens when i give 0 0 to sr obviously we are assuming that this output whatever is written here is produced as as we just said whenever a clock pulse is applied only then is this clear that is implied right yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so please see when i give 0 0 as the inputs to snr respectively what i get is the same output that i got the last time okay which we had just now termed as what which we had termed as qt qt right yes ma'am so can i call this first stage as the no stage no change condition yes ma'am so yes ma'am equivalently we can simply say that we when we give 0 0 as the input to the sr flip flop there is no change in the output of the flip flop is this clear yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am right now the second combination is 0 1 okay so 0 to s and 1 to r so please remember in the sr flip flop whatever we give to s okay whatever we give to s when s and r are different okay when when the inputs s and r are different from each other then whatever we give to s is what we receive as the output so s is given 0 i am getting 0 s is given 1 i get a 1 is this clear yes ma'am yes ma'am so basically what is happening when we give 0 to s and 1 to r the flip flop whatever contents it had earlier whatever contents it had earlier now i am getting irrespective of the contents of the flip flop and irrespective of the previous output i am going to get a zero okay so this is equivalent to clearing the flip flop to zero is this clear yes ma'am yes ma'am and similarly when i feed in a 1 to s and 0 to r then this flip flop is going to give me a 1 as the output okay so this is also sometimes known as resetting or setting the flip flop is this clear yes ma'am now please look at the final input combination that is s is equal to 1 r is equal to 1 now this is this input combination actually poses a problem for the sr flip flop and is therefore often quoted as one of the disadvantages of this flip flop in the sense that whenever we give this input to this flip flop the flip flop behaves in a indeterminable uh manner okay so in other words if i give it one one then i will not know what this flip flop for do for sure okay what kind of output it will produce 
we don't know is this clear so that is why this stage is known as the indeterminate stage and is generally forbidden so we do whenever if we are using the sr flip flop we don't give s is equal to 1 r is equal to 1 is this clear yes ma'am yes ma'am now please see that this table that you see here it is of the form of a truth table as we have seen earlier in that the similarity is that there are inputs here and there are outputs here okay but in case of flip flops instead of calling it as a truth table we call it as a characteristic table okay in case of flip flops this table is known as a characteristic table because it shows the characteristics of this huh, that means how it behaves under these conditions so if i give it this input combination what will it do if i give it this combination what will it do is this clear so it this this table depicts the behavior or characteristics of this flip flop and therefore it is known as what it is known as the characteristic table characteristic table yes okay now there is something also which is known as characteristic equation so <clears throat> your book actually mentions the characteristic equation for only a couple of flip flops that is i think d flip flop and t flip flop only but i have included this equation here for completeness what is a characteristic equation characteristic equation is basically just a kind of for example the kind of we we used to derive the boolean expression from a truth table right similarly the equation that can be derived by putting the characteristic table by plotting the characteristic table let's say into a carnot map okay and then the equation that we derive is called the characteristic equation okay so uh this equation basically sums up this behavior it basically sums up this behavior right so you don't need to uh remember all these characteristic equations only the ones that are given in your book but you may if you like to and the derivation is not in your course okay so i'm just leaving it at that let us proceed to the next flip flop now <coughs> sorry the next flip flop that we are going to talk about is a a uh, single input flip flop it is called the d flip flop which is a acronym for data flip flop now as you can see there is a single input here so you will see the other symbols as being same because all flip flops i told you are clocked are examples of clocked sequential circuits so this principle is going to be the same that whenever we apply the clock then the flip flops are going to work and then there are going to be two outputs we are going to be focusing on this q output okay at the next instant that is t plus 1 and this is going to be just the complement of this output that we get from here okay so d flip flop is a very simple flip flop in that it just does the basic work of the flip flop okay so what is that that if i feed in a zero here then i will get a zero at the next state and if i feed in a one here then i will get one at the next state you can see that okay this state is known as clear this set state is known as set any problem any problem students no ma'am right and what is the characteristic equation of this d flip flop that qt that the output at the next state that is q t plus 1 is always equal to the input is this clear 
So you can see yeah. that the characteristic equation simply sums up the behavior of the flip-flop, which is depicted in detail in the characteristic table. Any problem up till now? No, ma'am. No. OK. Next flip-flop that we're going to see is the JK flip-flop. It is named after its inventor, Jack Kilby. And this is also a two-input flip-flop, like the SR flip-flop. It is actually, it was designed to be an advantage uh, uh, over the SR flip-flop in the sense that it overcomes the indeterminate state feature of the SR flip-flop. Okay, so how is it better than the SR flip-flop? It is largely, you can see it is the same as the SR flip-flop. The only difference is in the fourth case, which in the SR flip-flop was indeterminable. And in this case, however, it is, uh, what we have done is, we have taken it to be, we, we have this flip-flop, uh, we, we ask it to give us, it's the, the complement of the output at the previous state. Okay, so like SR flip-flop, when I give it 0, 0, it gives me the no change condition. 0, 1, it gives me 0. 1, 0, it will give me 1. At 1, 1, it will give me Q dash T. So there are two important uh, functionalities which are available in this flip-flop. One is the no change condition and the other is the complement. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can I hear your feedback, students? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, right. Excuse me. Yes. Ma'am, is it something like that? If you, in the previous stage we are getting QT is equals to zero, then now at one one we will get a one. Yes, exactly. Okay, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Next is the toggle flip flop. Okay, this is the fourth flip-flop and the last flip-flop that we are going to see. Uh, the toggle flip-flop is also known as the T flip-flop popularly. Now, again, like the D flip-flop, this has only one input. Okay. Now, please see what does the toggle flip-flop do. When I give it a zero, it gives me the no change condition. Okay. And when I give it one, it gives me the complement is this clear yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am right so these are the flip flops okay now the next thing that we are going to see is very important i want your uh, complete attention here so that you understand it properly please see what are the excitation tables now, excitation table tells us that what should be the inputs, what should be the inputs, if the previous output was this and the next output is this. Okay, so what happens generally in flip-flops is that we generally know that, let's say, this is my given flip-flop, let's say SR flip-flop maybe, okay? Then what was the output that I got at the previous stage? That I know? Yes or no? At any instant, you know what the output a particular flip-flop has given at the previous stage, a 1 or a 0. Right? Yes, ma'am. And I may also know what is the output that I need now. That means I just need to clear the flip-flop, I need to set the flip-flop, or I need the same output as the previous time, or maybe in some flip-flops, for example, the JK flip-flop, the complement of the previous output. See, what is a flip-flop? It just stores the 
information. So the very basic thing you saw in the day flip flop, right? So you give a zero and you get a zero and you give a one and you get a one. Okay. So you store a zero. When you apply the clock pulse, it will give you zero. When you store a one and you apply the clock pulse, it will give you one. The basic, the very basic function of the flip flop. This is what we mean by memory or not? Students, if yes, you don't answer me, then what I'll do is that to ascertain how much you are actually getting, I will stop the topic in between and randomly take your names and start asking you questions. Okay? And then I'll have to note down the names of the students who either don't reply or are unable to give me answers. So these are the only two ways in which we can make the things a bit interactive. Okay? But a prerequisite for me is that I must be able to understand whether you are getting what I'm telling you or not. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma so please yes. keep on replying to me in case you are clear with something. In case you have a doubt, when I ask you, you can uh, uh, present your doubt. Is this okay, Vita? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma right. Yes, ma'am. So the basic functionality is covered here, right? But in other flip-flops, for example, the SR flip-flop and the JK flip-flop and the T flip-flop, we are having some more flexibility, OK? In that, that we are not just restricted to the value that we have feeded in the flip-flop, OK? So, so now, please see. Now, there is a single value that we have put into the flip-flop, right? Single bit, which will either be a 0 or a 1. So what can I do with it? How can I play with it? I The first thing is that, as we saw in the D flip-flop, we just got whatever we, we gave it, we got it back, right? So after that, we became a bit more adventurous, you know? And we uh, looked at, we, we added a, no change condition here, right? But this was a problem in the SR flip-flop, right? Because it had two inputs, so we could have four states here. Whenever I'm using a one single input flip-flop, obviously, I can only have two states. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma right. So in D and T flip-flop, you see? that I can have only two flip-flops. So since D was already doing this job, right? So for T, we took these two states, right? And so JK, in the JK flip-flop, we are having all the four things that is clearing, set, no change, and the complement. And this is most probably, you know, almost everything that you can do with a single bit of information. Or kya karoge uska? Or kya kar sakte ho? Thik hai, usko force kar sakte ho zero pe, matlab aapne zero dala, zero hi mil jaye, ya usko one pe reset karna, ya aap usko ulta kar sakte ho, ya aap usko aise hi rehne de sakte ho, or kya kar sakte ho storage element pe, or to kuch nahi kar sakte ho, ek bit of information se. Thik hai ki nahi? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, <clears throat> what is an excitation table? Excitation table is, when, we already know what was the output last time, which we generally pata hi hota hai. And generally, we also know what output we want. Okay. So what should be the input that I give to this flip-flop so that I get this output? So that I get this output. This is what the excitation table depicts. This is what the excitation depicts table depicts. So in this side, that is the left hand side of the screen, you can see 
the same characteristic table that we have just studies, uh, uh, studied for the SR flip-flop, I've pasted here. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see the excitation table for the same flip-flop, that is the SR flip-flop. Okay, so in this excitation table, I am given the, I already have the previous output and the next output. And what I am going to see is that what should be the out, what should be the input that I give to this flip-flop so that I can get this next output. Is this clear? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So let us see how to make a excitation table. How how these excitations tables can be arrived at. Okay. Now please see. Let us look at the first case where QT is zero and QT plus one is also zero. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma now. Let us go back to the characteristic table and see where I get 0 as the output. Where am I getting 0 as the output? And when both the inputs are 0. When? When S is 0 and when R is, is zero 1. And R is one. When S is yes. 0 and R, R is, is 1. one. Right. And also, because in this case, please see, there is one more case from this characteristic table that holds in this case. We see that the previous output was also 0 in this case. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and the next output we also want as 0. Mm. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma what is this condition called? Um, no change condition. No change. Yes, the no change, no change. condition. So the first case also holds. The first case also holds. So I can get a 0 in the output if I have the previous output as 0. If either I apply this case or this case. Yes, ma'am. Right or no? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. So... Let me just work it out for you here and show you. Is this visible to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So let me make this as my rough pad. Let's say this is the S input. This is the R input. Okay, right. So we have just said that either we give 0, 0 as SR inputs or we give 0, 1 as the SR inputs, right? So that means that for S, I definitely need to give a 0 if I want to get a 0. Yes? Are you with me? Yes. Yes, yes, no, yes, no. yes. But for R, it does not matter whether I give a 0 or a 1. Right or not? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so can I write this as 0 cross here? That means that you need to give a 0 if you want, if the previous output was 0. And the next output that you want is also 0, then it is certain that you need to feed in 0 to the S input. But for the R input, you may feed in whatever you like, either a 0 or a 1. It does not matter. I don't care. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma so now you have understood the first row of the excitation table, how we have arrived here at this uh, 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 input combination. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. Let us look at the next one now. Now, what is the next combination? The next combination is 0, 1. Okay. So 
please look at the characteristic table and tell me when can I get a 1 if my last output was 0? When S is 1 and R is 0. When S is 1 and R is 0. We said that S dominates. Yes. S says I am superior. So I have to give that right. And is there any other case that may apply? No, ma'am. No. So this is the this is the only combination in this case which works, right? So that is what we have listed here. Any problem? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Right. Let us look at the next case now, which is one zero. Okay, which is one zero. So when do I get a one zero? When do I get a zero? When the previous output was one. There is only one case. The second one. Mm -hmm. This S is the only case now where I get a zero. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma because no change condition is not going to apply here. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma so in this case, it will be zero, one. one. Right? Yes, ma'am. So you can see a zero one here. Any problem? No, ma'am. No, no ma'am. Right. Let us look at the final state, which is one one. Okay. So last time the output that I had was one, and next time also the output that I want is one. Okay. So the first case that applies in this case is the third row, where I give 1 to the S input and 0 to the R input, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And is there any other case that applies in this case? Ma'am, no change condition. Yes. Yes, ma'am. No Please look at this case very carefully. This is again the case of no change condition because I wanted the same output this time that I had last time. Is that right? Yes. Which, which, which happens when both S and R are 0. Yes or no, students? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, can I write this as don't care 1? That means I don't care what input you give for S, right? But R must be given as 0. Oh, R must be given as 0. Yeah. Right, students? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Are we on the same page? Have you understood this? Ma'am, please yes, read this again. The last one, right? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay, please see. Let us look at the last case again. I'm just magnifying it, zooming it so that it is visible to you. So... In the last case, the output at the last instant was 1. And the output that I wish to have at the next instant is also 1. This is clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Now, when can this happen? The first thing is that I objectively see when can I have the output 1 irrespective of my previous output. That is the third case, right? Yes, ma'am. So I have written down this combination 1, 0 here. OK? Yes, ma'am. Right. Now, the next thing is I notice that this is also the no change condition. Because the last output was 1, and the next output that I want is also 1. 1. Right? Yes, yes ma'am. Which happens when? The no change condition happens when? 0, 0. When zero, S zero. and R are both? 0, 0. 0, 0. So I simply write that down here. Any problem up till now? No, no ma'am. Ma no, ma right. So when I now inspect both these cases together, I see that 
I can feed in anything to S, right? Either a one or a zero, but R has to be fed a zero only for this output to occur. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, how do I write this? I'll simply put a cross here saying that I don't care what you give for S, but please give a zero to the R input if you want this output. When the previous output was one. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, so, this is what you see is written here X zero. Any problem up till now? No, ma'am. No, ma okay, good. Now, let us look at the characteristic table of JK flip flop once more so that we can derive the excitation of the JK flip flop next. Okay. For the time being, I'm just, you know, making it a bit bigger so that it is clearly visible to you. Again, this is for the JK flip flop. Okay. So now let us work for the JK flip flop. Okay. So this time I want you to work for work yourself. So sometimes you know in your uh, question paper you may be given some uh, flip flop x y. Its characteristic table may be given to you, and you may be asked to work out its excitation table. Okay, right. So you need to learn how to work out the excitation table. Right, that is why I'm doing it and showing it to you. Okay, so the first case is zero zero. Okay, so let us first look at where can I get a zero objectively, you know, without looking at the previous output. So that is the case when j is equal to zero, k is equal to equal one. To one. Any problem? No, ma'am. Right, and second case. This is the no change condition again, condition. right? Which is j is equal to zero, k is equal to zero. Any problem up till now? No, no ma'am. No, ma so what do I have? J has to be fed in zero, but k can be fed anything I don't That's care. Any problem? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Look at the first row. We've no, got the first row, right? Let us look at the second case now. So I want a one. Objectively, if I look at it, the third case applies right so one yeah. zero right and is there any other case that applies now complement is the fourth case that is the complement right yes or no students yes ma'am yes, yes, ma yes, so one ma and one right so what does this tell me this tells me that j has to be fed one and k can be fed anything any problem Look at the second one. No, ma'am. We've got this, right? Yes, ma'am. Let us look at the third case now. So, one, zero. Objectively, the second case will apply first, right? Which is k is equal to zero, k is equal to one, right? And the fourth case will also apply because the next output is going to be the complement of the first output right so one one so in this case i can feed in anything to j right but to for k i need to fit in one so this is the third row 
any problem no no ma'am no, ma right now let us look at the fourth case so this fourth case so in the fourth case i need a one right so which is given to me which is guaranteed to me in the third tuple right by the third case which is 1 0 so i'll write 1 here and a 0 here right and i also see that this is the case of no change so i'll put a 0 here and a 0 here right so what will i get cross see which is the fourth row here any problem No, no ma'am. No ma'am. Good. So this is how you need to work the excitation tables. Okay. Let us look at the excitation tables for the other two flip flops as well. The B flip flop and the T flip flop. Okay, so they should be simple. Let us just carry our characteristic table of the B flip flop with us first. you can see this this is clear visually it is clear yes ma'am so this is my rough pad right going to work here <coughs> yeah so the first case is when i want a zero and the last time it was also zero actually in d flip flop i know that when i want a zero what do i need to give zero zero irrespective of the previous state yes or no yes yes, yes ma'am in fact even the characteristic equation of the d flip flop did not have a mention of qt right because whatever we give it we can get at the next instant right like a basic memory element so if you want a zero you get a you feed in a zero if you want a one you feed in a one again zero you feed in a zero and again one you feed in a one any problem here no ma'am no, no ma'am okay yeah. let us do the t flip flop now now in the t flip flop you can see that when we gave a zero it was the no change condition and when we gave a one it was a complement condition right now so let us look at the first case and analyze so i want a zero okay in t flip flop in all the cases i have to look at the previous state because the output of t flip flop is always in terms of the previous output okay it is either the same as the previous output or the op opposite of the previous output right so when i want a zero i look at the previous output it is the same so what condition will apply 
no change. change. So no what will I give in T? I will give a no. C. Right? Similarly for 1, 1. No change condition. Will be yes. Similarly for the last row, that is 1, 1. What will I need to give? Zero. I will need to give T is equal to 0. zero. Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Now, please look at the second row and the third row. So in this case, please see, I want a 1 and the previous state was 0. And then I want a 0 and the previous state was 1. So obviously, which condition are we going to use? We are going to complement. use the complement. complement condition of the correct T's characteristic table. Right? So I'm going to feed in T is equal to 1 for both these cases to occur. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can you explain the second case again? Which one better? And second one, zero one, then the output. Yeah, one. zero one for both these cases, please see zero one and one zero. The output that I want at the next stage is complement of the output that I got at the previous stage. Right? Yes, ma'am. And when can that happen? Only when I give 1 to t. Yes, ma'am. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any problem now, students? No, ma'am. No, no ma'am. So we are just left with, I'll just borrow five minutes extra for, from you today so that we just complete this, okay? So the next thing that we're going to see, this this is just going to take five minutes now. Uh, the next thing that we're going to see are the edge-triggered flip-flops. What are the edge-triggered flip-flops? So we have already talked about these flip-flops as the clogged sequential circuits, right? So what are the clogged sequential circuits? We said that they operate when we give them a clock pulse. Okay, Only then they change their state. right? So we, we may be feeding them input. That means, as I told you, these are actually, the inputs are actually just the wires, which will always be carrying some charge. But they will make sense to the flip-flop. In, in, you can look at it as uh, that up. Circuit will work only when we supply the clock input. Okay, so what are the edge triggered flip flops? We are going to take it a bit further now. A clock can actually be seen as this complete wave. This is one, one clock pulse that you see here. So it starts from here, stabilizes, then comes down, stabilizes, and then goes up. So it finishes here. Okay, so this one complete wave is one clock pulse. Okay, so some flip flops work at the positive clock transition. That means when the clock is changing its state from this low to high. So when it is here, okay, when it is here, then these flip flops will give their output okay the other kind of flip-flops there are some other kind of flip-flops which instead of responding to the positive clock transition respond to the negative clock transition the only thing that mean uh, the only thing that it means is that when will this flip-flop give me its output only when I am in the falling stage where when the when the clock pulse is falling okay when it is trailing okay not when it is rising okay when it is rising if the flip flop gives me the output then that flip flop is called the positive edge triggered flip flop and if we get the output when the clock pulse is falling okay you can see that this this here when it is falling this time, if if I get the output then, then it is known as the negative edge triggered flip flop. Any problem? No, ma'am. No. Right? 
Now, after this, please see there is a concept of uh, a master slave flip flop. What is a master slave flip flop? Master slave flip flop is actually a set of two flip flops. Okay, same, same flip flops. So one D flip flop connected with another D flip flop. The first D flip flop is called the master flip flop, and the second flip flop is called the slave flip flop. They are so called because whatever D does, the first D does, the second D will also do that if we are using the D flip flop. So the same input, uh, the same input combinations are given to both the flip flops. Since the first flip flop works first, it gives the same output. And after that, the slave flip flop will work and it will give us the same output. That is why it is known as slave of the first one. That means because it is seen to be copying the same behavior that the first one did. Okay, so what is done is generally a positive triggered flip flop and a negative tr triggered flip flop can be taken in a combination. So during the same clock cycle, during the positive cycle, the master flip flop will respond. And the during the trailing clock cycle, the slave flip flop will respond. OK, so this is generally done in commercial uh, circuits. Uh, this is generally employed there. And such flip flops are known as the master slave flip flops. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Let me just show you. So please see. <clears throat> yeah. So you can see it here. Let me just take you to the edge triggered flip flops as well. Edge triggered flip flops. The most common type of flip flop used to synchronize the state change during a clock pulse transition is the edge triggered flip flop. In this type of you can you see? Yes, yes, from where I'm reading, in this type of flip-flop, output transitions occur at a specific level of the clock pulse. Okay, So when the clock pulse input level exceeds this threshold level, the inputs are logged out so that the flip-flop becomes unresponsive. So the positive uh, triggered flip-flop, that will respond only when the clock pulse is rising and when it goes to let's say it is going from zero to one so as soon as it reaches one after that the flip-flop stops working only works during the rising phase that is when the clock pulse is going from zero to one so uh, when the, uh, when the when the pulse input level exceeds this threshold this threshold means suppose one is the threshold the inputs are logged out so that the flip-flop is now unresponsive to the further changes in the input until the clock pulse returns to zero and another pulse occurs is this clear yes ma'am some edge triggered flip-flops some edge triggered flip-flops Some edge triggered flip flops cause a transition on the rising edge of the click clock signal, and others cause a transition on the falling edge of the uh, clock signal. Okay, so I want you to read all this yourself. Okay, I've explained this to you. Let us now move on to the master slave flip flop. Another type of flip-flop used in some systems is called the master-slave flip-flop. 
This type of cir circuit consists of two flip-flops. The first is the master, which responds to the positive level of a clock. And the second is the slave, which responds to the negative level of the clock. Is this clear? Right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The result is that the output can change during the 1-0 transition and also during the 0-1. Right? Okay. But they are saying that the trend is away from, now, now the trend is away from using the master slave flip-flops. And it is towards using, that means edge-triggered flip-flops are now being used um, more. Okay, so thing will either the positive or the negative edge-triggered flip-flops. Okay. So, uh, this is it, students, for today. Okay, this is it for today. We have all done this. Right. So this finishes our chapter number one. This finishes our chapter number one, students. Okay. And we will be starting off with chapter number two next time. Here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just give me a minute. I'll just share the attendance sheet with you. Okay.